The 14% of women in a relationship will admit they can't face playing hide the sausage without downing a couple of glasses of wine first. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, it's there's, there's lots of words you yeah, can't say on, on daytime mm. TV, but no, you can do that sequence of amazing, words. Amazing, amazing. Oh, that's what that game they were always playing with. <laughs> <laughs> now, is any of this shocking or surprising, I wonder? Or even a bit sad? Are four glasses of wine better than 14, 40 minutes of foreplay? Don't worry, I'll explain it to you later, Eric. It's, 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 it's a really simple concept. Uh, do you need to drink to wash away your inhibitions, to feel more confident about yourself, your body? your performance or do you need beer goggles to blind you to the fact <laughs> you don't fancy your old man anymore and then I keep saying what about us blokes we weren't mentioned in this survey do we need a drink to stiffen our resolve what if you have a few too many what if you have a few too many and mr. floppy comes out to play <laughs> does it matter does any of this matter Right? If either sex needs a drink to get the most out of it. I mean, yesterday's special guest, Faye Weldon, a sprightly 78-year-old, suggested a glass of sherry is just what's needed to help women transform from a state of reason, rationality and common sense to one of wild exuberance. <laughs> Which is the same thing as saying, is it not that you need to be drugged up to get anything out of sex, Amanda? You knew you were coming to me first. <laughs> um, I have to admit... If I have a couple of glasses of wine or a particular orange liqueur, I am a little bit of an animal insect. Oh. <laughs> 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 no, I do think. You're worthy of them too. I do think that. Um, <laughs> That yes. So you need to get lose... drugged up. No, I don't to need to get drugged sex. up. I can do it perfectly well without a single drop you of liquor being passing up. my lips. No, I don't prefer it. <laughs> um, my inhibitions are, are, are slightly. I, I do lose my inhibitions if I have. But there's a very fine line. You know, yeah. three glasses of wine down my neck. Considering I've just had a baby, I'm asleep. Waste of time. So you've got to. It's a tight. But I think also, joking aside, when you first have sex with someone, it's normally. You know, you're in those heady, heady first days of romance and you've been out for dinner and you've got a little bit nervous, so you've probably yeah, had yeah. a couple of drinks more than... And I think, yeah, a couple of drinks will kind of not only loosen your knicker elastic, it will also loosen... <laughs> <laughs> it will also loosen your inhibitions. Um, but and, just... Not... And, the, and the, women, the women who said they've never had sex without a drink first? No, well, that's, that's yeah. quite sad. I mean, that's bordering on some kind of problem, isn't it? If you, if you, what if you want some... What if you want sex in the morning? Have you got a knock back a, a couple of glasses of wine? Pint again? Yeah. I mean, I, I think that... I think your, your inhibitions... I think most women are incredibly inhibited about their bodies, mm. even if they look like Elle McPherson. Um, I think all of us worry about our lumps and our bumps and our bits and bobs. And I think if you have a couple of glasses of the old uh, Savion beforehand, your lumps and bumps seem a little bit less kind of... <laughs> a little bit more fuzzy. <laughs> OK. Um... Michael. I, well, I, I, I just know that I've read studies that married couples have to be soused to actually speak to each other. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know how that, you know, translates into the next step of sex. Or, or, well, it's uh, funny, we, we drink because we're nervous and it's new. Mm. Uh, we drink to lose our inhibitions and then we carry on drinking uh, because we're either bored or we've had enough or we need something to to get us in the mood, and it's, it's, it's like self-medicating to do an, a, a, a natural... I don't know. I, I, you need to be careful. You, you, if you were going down that route of having to have a drink before you had sex, you'd, you would be worried. Well, I would be worried. But, of course, it's that old adage, isn't it? Alcohol increases your desire but takes away your yeah. performance, and it's true. Shakespeare, uh, yeah. Porter, yeah. Exactly. Macbeth. But you don't remember the next morning, so... <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, also, I think it ties in, doesn't it, with um, the study earlier in the week about women's body image, and I think you're absolutely yeah. right about that, you know. And, what and about wanting... men? What about men in all of this? Uh... Doesn't it make it... Well, only if you have loads. Well, again, with men, you know, I think they may be nervous. I think particularly if it's on a new date or you're out and you're trying to, you know, pull someone in a bar, then you're obviously going to be having a few drinks as well. It gives you Dutch courage. You're more likely to say hilarious things to try and impress them. Um, <laughs> and, of course, there is a very fine line between how much you yeah. can have before, you know, as you say, um, your performance is it's severely impeded. <laughs> Or Mr. Floppy comes Mr. out to Floppy play. Mr. Floppy comes yeah. out to play, yes, that's what I was going to say. Unfortunately, you're in a hotel room with a family when that happens. <laughs> <laughs> Not a family you know. It's... it's, 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 it's any, is any... I mean, I'm, I, I... I read this yesterday, and I, I, can, I, I did genuinely feel slightly 
disappointed for us as people that maybe mm. maybe our expectations are, are too high and that we because uh, it is I mean we are we are talking here you know alcohol is a drug it's a powerful drug we are talking about people women drugging themselves out yeah, in order right. to enjoy sex and that makes me feel but disappointed I want women to want to have sex with me because I'm there wow. I'm here it's, hello yeah. But Not also because goes, they're half cut. But this is all about our attitudes to sex anyway, and, and also, you know, enjoying your body and being confident and all those things, and it's incredibly complex. And, of course, the whole sexual act in itself is deeply psychological. You've got to feel confident, uh, to, you know, to enjoy it. But that's what I mean. It's like, it's, 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 you're cutting the corners, and, yes. it, and if confidence, a lack of confidence is a problem, then you are going to end up being the whatever percentage of women it is, 14% uh, 14. 14. of women who admitted they, they couldn't face playing hide the sausage without a couple of glasses yeah, of wine before. It's more than one in ten women have to have a drink. Well, some of them have never played that game before. <laughs> 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 I'm not sure. What about you, Kirsty? You're keeping very quiet. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I'm fine. But having said that, you know, and I, I'm so pleased that I did drink as much as I did when I look back at some of the past photographs. <laughs> really. Because you were blind. Very much so. Yeah. OK, OK, what do the people at home have to say? <laughs> First, we have Linda on line one. Linda, good morning. Hi. Uh, so do you need a drink before doing it? No, I think reality is brilliant because you can remember every tiny detail about it. I mean, what, what's reality great. like, Linda? What if you don't remember? <laughs> <laughs> no, exactly. So when you're saying you're totally relaxed, you don't need anything to put you in the mood whatsoever? Oh, no, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> have you have you have you done it while drunk? I did it when I was younger, when I was drunk, and I, to be honest, I I didn't really like it. Really, I don't think I felt completely in control, and I just felt I don't know. Well, isn't it interesting? Weird, you're, really. You're saying you didn't feel completely in control, and I'm thinking wild exuberant sex, as Faye Weldon put it, would involve losing control, doesn't it? Yeah, but if you if you're completely sober and reality's there, then when you're looking at somebody or they're looking at you and doing whatever they're doing, then it's <laughs> intense and you can remember it all and you can you can sort of keep that memory in your mind and it's like a nice positive memory rather than waking up in the morning you've had a load of drinks and you think what happened last night, you know. <laughs> But I do think that there is a difference between having a lot of drinks and, and, and one drink. You know, I think one drink does relax you and makes you stop thinking about the fact that wallpaper needs replacing or, you know, the ceiling. Or, you know, it's like a snapshot <laughs> into the mind of David yeah. Bull there, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> I actually don't have any wallpaper. So. Oh, no. That's more than I need to know. Um, I'm already seeing the Twitter photos pouring in. Um, Linda, thank you very much for the call. Uh, that's a vote for reality. Let's have another. Sherry's online too. Uh, Sherry, good morning. Hi. Hi there. Uh, what about you? Do you need a drink? Definitely. Definitely. Right now? Why? <laughs> why, why now? Why? I think I've been with my partner for 12 years. Um, four kids later down the line. Stretch marks, um, my body's not the same. Plus, like you said, you, you start, your mind wanders over the ceiling needs doing what I'm cooking to do tomorrow, <laughs> what the kids going to wear, and the appointments, what I've got to do. Yeah. Definitely need a drink. Oh, I think I'm going to need a drink if we carry on like that. <laughs> um, and, uh, and that's always been the way, or do you think it, it may be, I mean, mm, I mean it's, a, it's not a nice thing to suggest, but is it, is it just possible that you feel like you need a drink now because maybe you're a bit bored or you're just all a bit familiar and you just want to... Well, it's too familiar. At the beginning, we had a fantastic sex life, um, chocolates, breads, you name it, we've tried it. But like I said, 12 years down the line, it feels mundane, you do the same thing all the time, and it just gets a bit boring, so a little drink... Maybe watching something spicy on the TV definitely lives some things up. OK. OK, I, I really have lived a sheltered life. Uh, I haven't done the chocolate spread thing uh, at all. Marmite. Um, uh, thank you very much for that. Let's have another. Oh, Marmite. Uh, we have Joe on line three. You either love it or hate it. I hate it. <laughs> Clearly. Um, I love it. Uh, OK, uh, Jo. Hello. Morning, Jo. Good morning. Uh, are you uh, a drinker before uh, doing it? Unfortunately, yes, especially if it is the first time with a new partner. Yeah, I, even I can see uh, the common sense there. Um, but you say unfortunately. Well, I mean, after, I think after you've been with someone for a long time, or at least for a length of time, you've got more faith in them, it's then easier to relax and you're more likely to enjoy it. But 
initially, um, being female, I think you are generally very worried about your body image and whether you appear too fat, too thin, whether your bust is big enough or too small or anything like that. I mean, I've even got female friends um, that are extremely skinny with beautiful figures that are apprehensive the first time and need a drink first. I don't think it matters what you look like. I think it's always, I mean, as Amanda said right at the beginning, it, it, all those sort of insecurities. I think everybody has the men, women, all Definitely. sizes, all shapes. Mind you, I wouldn't say the men do at all because um, a lot of the males I know really couldn't care less whether they've got a little bit of a tummy or not. They just go ahead whether they've had a beer or not. And they all seem to be um, very much loving themselves regardless of what they look like. Do you know what, Joe? It may just be a load of bull, if I can leave that one hanging in the air. I think men are great at, uh, at hoodwinking uh, people into thinking they're super confident because yeah. that's what they have to do. Maybe, uh, maybe they're just pulling the wool over your eyes.